All right, Bulls Nation, we have another move by the Chicago Bulls. Kind of surprising one, honestly, but as you can see here, Goran Dragic has signed for a one-year $2.9 million deal for the Chicago Bulls. Very, very surprising, but I'm going to get into it, kind of explain the thought process behind it, talk about his contract. After that, I want to get into the Derrick Jones Jr. Uh, re-sign and then kind of look at where the Bulls stand currently as they now, have current, they now have 15 players on their current roster. But before we get into it all, make sure you hit that like button if you're new to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. We're a fourth of the way there to 1,000 subscribers, but I really, really appreciate you guys subscribing. But let's talk about Goran Dragic now becoming a member of the Chicago Bulls. So, as I said, as this was released earlier today, um, you guys, you guys should see this the day after, but Dragic was assigned to a one year, $2.9 million deal with the Bulls. Um, and before I even get into my thoughts on this deal, I want to explain to a lot of people, um, what this contract is. Cause for some reason, it looks like all Bulls nation has become cap experts, uh, during this, uh, free agency period. I'm going to tell you right now, they're not. A lot of people do not understand the cap. I'm not calling myself a cap expert but i do know a lot more than the average fan so just to explain this to you guys and to also bring up people that have check marks by their name to show you that i know what i'm talking about here this is a veteran minimum contract so this is literally gonna count as 1.8 million dollars to the bulls cap okay um a lot of people saw the 2.9 they're like oh my god we used 2.9 million of our mid-level exception which is already down to 7 million why would we do such a thing um a lot of people are freaking out about that but um, this is a veteran minimum contract. So at max, it's going to count as 1.8 to the cap for the Chicago Bulls. It does not use the mid-level exception. And if you don't believe me, well, let me show you this. All right. So Hoops Rumors, very valuable resource here. Um, if you look at Hoops Rumors and they talk about the, the minimum uh, salaries for the NBA, uh, basically a vet minimum um, the longer you play, the higher the salary will be, the more that the player will get. But it will always count as a minimum contract to the, the team's cap, all right? So, for example, with DeAndre Jordan, he signed for the minimum. He'll be earning basically what Dragic is earning for the Bulls, but as you can see here, the Nuggets will only be charged for this much money, which is 1.8, a.k.a. the minimum. Um, so the rest of the salary, so the rest of the $1.1 million that Dragic and DeAndre Jordan will be getting will basically be reimbursed by the league. Uh, they will give... Uh, that money to the players and the Bulls will not have to worry about that at all. All right. So just to get, make that clear that the Bulls did not use their mid-level exception on Dragic. It is for a minimum contract. Okay. Now my thoughts on this move. This is definitely, um, I, I know a lot of fans were criticizing this move um, right off the bat because it's like, oh my God, we don't need another guard. We need a forward. And I think it's very evident that the Bulls need a forward. I've been calling for a forward as well. Um, they struck out on Gallinari, so that's that's it. But at the end of the day, I do like this move. One, it's a minimum contract, okay? So think of this as he's replacing Matt Thomas on last year's roster, right? I would much rather have Dragic than Matt Thomas on this roster. Sorry to Matt Thomas. So Dragic is basically just a lot of insurance at the PG spot. But at the end of the day, we have to be real here. Lonzo Ball's knee is definitely a concern. And it's not just a concern for the fans. It's a concern for the front office. Uh, and this right here is basically showing that they're concerned about it, but he's also an insurance policy. At the end of the day, Dragic is going to only be playing at max 15 minutes, 16 minutes a game. I don't see him really playing anymore. Um, and that's if he's actually in the rotation, which I don't really expect him to be in the rotation right off the bat, um, especially if Lonzo's healthy. But we do know that Lonzo is probably not going to be 100% healthy throughout the entire season. Um, I think he's not going to be ready for training camp. And if he is, then I think he's going to be on a minutes restriction. Um, and then obviously uh, Lonzo has not played more than 63 games in the season. So I think Bulls will be lucky if he plays 60 games this season. Uh, that's the reason why Dragic is here. Because... The way I look at it right now for the Bulls is that Io is the backup point guard, but then if Lonzo's out, Io slides into the PG spot in the starting lineup, but then who backups Io? Now, I know a lot of people talk about Caruso, um, and I think Caruso did a very, very admirable job at the PG spot, especially in the playoffs against the Bucks. but I think we kind of see here that we want Caruso, one, coming off the bench because that's where he's most effective, uh, but number two... You don't want him playing the PG position. And the reason being is that you want Caruso to, to give 110% effort on the defensive end. You don't want him worrying about running the offense, making sure everyone gets involved and, you know, setting up the plays and everything. 
you want him basically just worrying about defense. You want him to be pesky and give me 110% effort on the defensive end. And you don't also just don't want him playing at 36 minutes a game. That's not good for Caruso as he takes a lot of hits and bumps. So this right here is basically the insurance policy. In case Lonzo cannot play, I will be the starter. Dragic is the backup point guard. Um, and I love that. It's a minimum deal, guys. All right. Don't think that we signed him using the mid-level exception. It's a minimum deal contract. And honestly, I'm shocked that he came to the Bulls because it looked like he was going to Dallas as Luka wanted him. But Nikola Vucevic got Dragic here. So I love this for the Bulls because this is definitely an insurance policy. Again, I do not trust Lonzo's knees. I know Dragic is not a defender, but at the end of the day, I think you kind of saw how bad the Bulls desperately needed point guard play last season. Um, again, I consider Caruso basically a shooting guard, but also I don't want him running the PG spot. So Dragic can definitely run the PG position. I know he's about to turn 36, but he's a veteran. He, uh, is a very good three point shooter. A lot of people are questioning it because he shot 25% from three last season, but he barely played last season. Um, so I, I need people just to quit on that. He's a career 36% three point shooter. All right. He's going to be a good three point shooter for this team when he plays. And, uh, at the end of the day, man, I, I can just look at Dragic and I think he can really mentor Io because um, they have definitely similar body types. And, you know, Io's a guy that we're going to have to trust a lot this season because of Lonzo's uh, injury issues. Dragic is a guy that could definitely mentor Io to be the, uh, the a very good playmaker, but also uh, learn how to uh, shoot off the dribble and off the pick and roll because that's something that Io kind of struggled with last season. So if Dragic can mentor Io, Perfect. I'm all I'm all for. It. Again, minimum contract. This is very, very good by the Bulls. So um that basically just wraps up my whole thing on Dragic. Um last thing I'll, I will mention is this. A lot of people were thinking that Dale and Terry was kind of like, oh, he'll be like the third string point guard for this team. Right now, to me, I think Dale and Terry is very much a wing. I, I have him s slotted in as the backup small forward, kind of him and Javante Green kind of fighting for that position. Um I think Dale and Terry is very much just a wing. I, I don't think he really played point guard in college for what I've seen. Um, and I think that'd be a lot for a rookie to not really play point guard in college, like how Io did, and then come in and play backup point guard minutes for this Bulls team. I just don't see it. Um, and I, I just would much rather use the six, seven, uh, six, seven length, uh, elsewhere and not running the PG position. So, um, again, I love this deal. I think this is very, very good for the Bulls. Good insurance policy because Alonzo's knee issues. Um, good job by AK and good job by Vooch for getting him here. Now I want to talk about the Derrick Jones Jr., uh, deal really quickly and then we're going to get to kind of where the Bulls uh, kind of stand here in all their contracts but Derrick Jones Jr. is back uh, I also like this deal this is a very solid deal uh, for the Bulls I know people are all thinking like well we needed a different forward and I understand I'll get to that in a second but Derrick Jones Jr. is back on a very cheap deal um, player option the second season it's two year 6.6 .6 million dollar deal he made nine million last season okay this is very very cheap um, and I, I, I like this a lot now, there was a bit confusion of like, what the heck is this deal? Um, or how did the Bulls actually sign their re-sign Derek Jones Jr.? But because the Bulls had early bird rights on him, but this contract can't be an early bird rights contract because uh, the second year is a player option. If you're going to give an early bird rights contract out, it has to be two years guaranteed. And that player option is not a guaranteed uh, contract year. So basically what the Bulls did here, kind of basically using his cap hold that they have, which was like $12 million, but they basically renounced his early bird rights and he became a non um, restricted free agent. Uh, I don't know how the exact, the exact terms are, but or not non bird uh, free agent. All right. Um, but this still allows you to retain that player. You can, you can get like a hundred and either 10% or 120% raise from his previous salary. But as you can see here, this is not um, something that needs to be worried about because Derek Jones Jr. is going from nine million to three million, so this is not something to worry about at all. But he can only be used. Uh, the, you can only use the non-bird uh, exception to re-sign him because of this player option that the Bulls gave him. Right? Um, if the Bulls didn't give him a player option, it's just a two-year deal, straight up guaranteed. Then it would have been early bird rights. But this is just a player option. But at the end of the day, this doesn't really matter. Um, just explain that for all the people that are, are cap nerds like me. So. This is now where I want to lead into where the Bulls kind of stand currently. Um, just looking at the salaries here, uh, the Bulls, as this is basically their salary uh, for right now. Um, this is definitely subject to change, and I'm going to kind of explain some things I, I want to look at that could potentially change here. Um, but this is by MK, MK Hoops. He works for CHGO for, uh, for the Bulls. Now, 
Guaranteed money is at $148 million. As you can see here, the bulls are $1.7 million below the luxury tax. Now, I know a lot of people are already kind of upset about the whole luxury tax thing, and I am as well, and I'll explain to that in a second here. But this is the 15 players. This is a full roster for the Bulls, uh, and Justin Lewis is one of our two-way guys. We have another two-way slot open. Um, and when I look at this, the Bulls have some resources left over. One is the uh, is uh, $7 million of remaining mid-level exception. Now, if the Bulls do use the rest of this mid-level exception, uh, they become hard-capped at the tax apron, which is, as you can see here, about $157 million. Uh, if the Bulls actually just use more than this right here, the taxpayer mid-level exception, so if they just go just above this much money, they'll be hard-capped at the tax apron. But when you think about that, and the Bulls are $1.7 million below the tax, I don't think the Bulls are going to be using that much money um, because it very clearly looks like that the Bulls are staying away from the tax this season. And I don't know if that's Jerry or I don't know if that's the front office, but either way, it does make me a little upset here. But I'll explain my thought process of kind of playing devil's advocate in a second here. So one move that I'm looking at for us to use the mid-level exception but stay below the tax because it looks like this front office wants to do is moving Kobe White. And I think everyone has talked about moving Kobe White on Twitter. Um, but he's making $7.4 million. The Bulls have $7.3 million rema remaining in the, in the mid-level exception. You move Kobe White, not only do you, uh, you can use the rest of the mid-level exception as that opens up a player, uh, that opens up a roster spot, but you can use the mid-level exception and still stay below the luxury tax. So there's that. Also gives you some wiggle room uh, below the luxury tax if they go out and sign somebody uh, in the buyout market and from the minimum. That's also another option. Now, another thing I'm looking at is moving on from Tony Bradley. Uh, his $2 million actually kind of counts here. Um, I don't see what team is going to take him. I, if anything, the Bulls have to give up a draft asset to move him, probably. Um, but at the end of the day, I would like to get rid of him because if we waive him, his salary still counts towards uh, the cap here. So it would do nothing. It just opens up a roster spot. Now, if the Bulls are very willing to go into the luxury tax, hey, go ahead and waive him. But... I don't see that happening, unfortunately. Um, Marco's going to stay. Uh, I know people are thinking that, well, we can just get rid of this guy. He's the cheapest guy here. He's here to stay. So with potentially the mid-level exception available for the Bulls, um, who are guys that I'm looking at potentially getting? Uh, one is TJ Warren. I think this is a name that's been kind of thrown out by Casey Johnson as well. Uh, the problem with TJ Warren is that he's, hasn't played last season. He played four games of se previous season. So it's definitely a scary idea with TJ Warren. But, I mean, hey, if he accepts the minimum, I, I think I'm all for it. And then it, it becomes very simple, staying below the luxury tax. But it's going to be interesting to see what this Bulls team does because the other resource that is still available is the Daniel Tice trade exception, which is $5 million, which we got last season. It expires on the 7th of July. So if this Bulls team is actually going to use it, they better get going quick here. And I don't know how they're really going to use it because if they're looking to stay below the tax, uh, they have to send out players and therefore it's going to be hard to use that trade exception. Um, but who knows? I mean, a guy I've always said is Brandon Clark. I think he, he fits right into that trade exception. I would love him on this team. Rim protection, forward spot. There you go. But I don't know if the Grizz is going to give him up that easily. Now, I'm going to play devil's advocate here for reasons why the Bulls might be staying below the luxury tax um, and also why they haven't spent their entire mid-level exception yet or um, they're only looking to spend the taxpayer mid-level exception. So they have about $3.2 million left of, of that. Reason being is that there's, or the reasons are is this. One, the Bulls might be looking to make a serious move here. If they are looking to make a serious move that adds on a lot of cap, they can't go. They can't hard cap themselves. So using just a, above this much of the six point four million dollars, or using the full MLE, right? Either one would hard cap them at the apron. Okay, so that means they wouldn't be able to bring out more payroll than this number right here. That's option number one. Is that the Bulls are looking to make a serious move that's going to bring in a whole bunch of salaries. Therefore, they can't hard cap themselves because. If they do, they're not going to be able to bring this, this much money. Other option is this. And I don't know if I can really accept this, but 
you know, if this ends up giving us a championship, I'm all for it. Maybe this front office doesn't actually think this is a contender. Therefore, they're doing this by a step-by-step process, and then maybe next season, or who knows, the season after that, they're looking at an actual contender, and then they're, they're going to be willing to spend the luxury, or go into the luxury tax. The thing that irks me about that is, I think for this team to get the most out of this team, I think you need to go into the luxury tax, because there are players out there at free agency, or players that you can trade for currently, that if you go into the luxury tax, I'm not saying, you know, go past the tax paper, I'm just saying $5 million into the luxury tax, that makes this team better. And maybe you can evaluate this team even better. Because Mark obviously kind of said something in one of his press conferences, I think it was at draft night, that he's the Bulls are taking this as a step-by-step process. So it's not like they're going all in like right now, like how you just saw the Minnesota Timberwolves do with Rudy Gobert. They're taking this as a step-by-step process and making sure they're making the right moves to help this team move forward. Maybe they think this this team is not a contender. They probably think this team can go pretty far in the playoffs, but not win the championship. Therefore, they're not willing to spend the tax. If they go into the tax this season, um, I think if they hit a certain limit, they'll then have to pay the tax next season, but then also hit the repeater tax, which would be more money uh, for the Reinsdorfs, and they probably don't want to upset the Reinsdorfs. So maybe that's the reason why they're avoiding the tax this season. So the repeater tax doesn't kick in next season because they're probably going to go into the tax next season. That's just my theory. It's just a theory that I've kind of come up with just to kind of make myself feel better about this situation because I will say that this Bulls front office, I haven't 100% agree with all the decisions that they've made, uh, especially not going into the luxury tax this season. But if they don't want to piss off the Reinsdorfs, which is an actual thing that they might have to worry about here, then and they're w- thinking about going deep into the luxury tax in next season, I'm all for avoiding the tax this season. But I'm not in the front office. I don't I can't predict the future. I don't know if that's actually their plan. So for Bulls fans, just to if you're upset about the luxury tax, how I am, maybe that's something that you can grasp on to be like, I can accept that. But at the end of the day, I don't know. I actually have no clue uh if that's really the case or not. I sure hope it is, because it looks like the Bulls are gonna avoid the luxury tax this season. Um, but Maybe they'll prove me wrong in the next couple of days. But that's all I have for you guys in this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Goran Dragic is a Chicago Bull, and Derek Jones Jr. has re-signed with this team. And I showed you guys where the Bulls stand in their current 15-man roster. But if you uh, like the video, make sure you hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.